Welcome to the Tel Aviv seminar on computational geometry and robotics. Today we are very much on the geometry side and we are happy to have with us Nathan Rubin from Ben Gurion University who will speak about stronger bounds for weak epsilon nets in higher dimensions. Uh, th thank you, Dani, for introducing me. It's my pleasure to see you uh, for the first time uh, online since uh, uh, the, the seminar uh, occurred uh, uh, live. Uh, well, I hope uh, that soon uh, we'll have uh, live seminars as well. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, the uh, uh, the uh, topic, the subject of this talk is uh, very clear from uh, the title. So uh, we seek stronger bounds for uh, weak epsilon nets. Uh, in higher dimensions. Uh, and uh, there is a good tradition to, uh, when there is uh, some uh, fancy uh, uh, name, uh, uh, there is uh, some term to look it up on Google. So I Google and find an image and uh, show it. So I Googled uh, higher dimensions and it showed uh, uh, some uh, strange uh, uh, things about uh, uh, higher consciousness and uh, all the new age stuff. So uh, I brought uh, one uh, of them to enlighten you about uh, what uh, the meaning of uh, higher dimensions. <laughs> And uh, I also, well, I think that it's better to have stronger bounds for weak epsilon nets than weaker bounds for strong epsilon nets. Uh, and uh, let's uh, begin uh, with the basics. Uh, uh, how much time uh, have we got? We're between 50 minutes and one hour. If, if you want one hour, it should include the questions, definitely. Okay, so about one hour. Okay, I still remember times when it used to be two hours. This the... is before the Zoom days. In Zoom, it's harder. With Sufganiyot, uh, it used to be the case. Uh, uh, okay, so... Uh, we are given uh, a finite uh, point set and uh, we have uh, some uh, basic family of uh, geometric uh, uh, regions called, which are uh, commonly called ranges. Uh, uh, so we can think of uh, all the possible boxes in uh, this space, axis parallel boxes, we can think of uh, disks, we can think of simply sets, uh, we can think of uh, convex sets, uh, hyperplanes, uh, whatever you fancy. And uh, uh, we, uh, an epsilon net uh, uh, is, uh, a, is uh, a point set uh, at which uh, hits uh, uh, all the ranges which encompass uh, an epsilon, a certain uh, fixed epsilon fraction of the underlying uh, point set. So uh, we have, uh, think of this as uh, some, uh, this uh, point set represents a measure and uh, uh, we seek uh, to hit uh, all the uh, heavy uh, uh, sets which uh, 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 consume uh, an epsilon fraction of this measure. And of course, uh, we seek such a, a point set uh, which is, should be as small as possible. Otherwise, uh, we can just uh, uh, 
uh, for example, choose uh, all the uh, underlying uh, points at P and that's it, but we uh, seek it to be as small as possible and uh, only depend on the uh, uh, value of epsilon and maybe the uh, underlying dimension D, but uh, not on the size uh, of the ground point set. And uh, uh, also know that we did not uh, require that our net uh, uh, come from uh, the underlying point set. Uh, which uh, makes a huge difference because uh, if we do require it, then it is strong. And otherwise, uh, if we can just uh, pierce uh, the heavy sets with uh, uh, some points not necessarily from the basic set P, then we uh, have a so-called uh, weak net. And uh, here is some history, epsilon nets where first introduced uh, in the 70s uh, by Vapnik and Chervonenkis in the context of uh, statistical learning theory. And uh, in uh, 86, uh, Hausler and Svelzel started a revolution by introducing the notions uh, of uh, epsilon nets and epsilon approximations and uh, so forth into computational uh, geometry and uh, put in uh, the area uh, on uh, uh, more rigorous and systematic uh, uh, footing. Uh, so uh, here are some, uh, so epsilon nets are cornerstone notion in uh, discrete and computational geometries. So uh, there are strong uh, connections to selection uh, and Weber type results. And uh, in this talk, we'll mention some of these connections. Uh, and they essentially mentioned in the, uh, uh, maybe the very first uh, paper on VCAP, which obtains uh, a, a reasonable uh, 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 bounded size uh, uh, with epsilon net constructions. I mean, the paper by Alon Baranik, Foredi, and Kleitman. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the machinery of uh, weak epsilon nets was used by Alon and Kleitman to establish uh, the famous uh, uh, Hadbiger de Brunner PQ conjecture. Uh, of course, uh, epsilon nets, uh, uh, strong and weak, uh, determine uh, the uh, integrality gap of uh, various uh, geometric uh, uh, heat inset uh, problems. Uh, so they determine uh, the performance of various uh, approximation algorithms. Uh, uh, and uh, strong nets also used to uh, cross computational geometry whenever we seek to decompose uh, a set of uh, geometric objects into regularly behaved uh, pieces of smaller complexity. And also epsilon nets uh, uh, are related to various other areas of mathematics, including analysis, probability, uh, more recently model theory, algebraic geometry, and so forth. And uh, the most basic uh, result in this regard is uh, the uh, so-called uh, epsilon net theorem of Hausler and Pelzer. So uh, suppose we have a, a, a family of uh, geometric sets in the Euclidean D-dimensional space. Uh, which uh, has a so-called uh, bounded uh, wapnik chervonenkis dimension. And when does this happen? Uh, whenever one can define these uh, geometric sets using uh, uh, a low degree polynomials, small number of low degree polynomials typically. So it includes uh, uh, all the imaginable geometric sets of uh, bounded description complexity. Uh, so under such circumstances, we always have uh, a strong epsilon net uh, whose size uh, 
uh, is uh, given here, but uh, up to the logarithmic uh, um, ratio is basically, uh, it behaves like close to one over epsilon, which is really good because uh, this is what you get, of course, uh, for uh, segments on a real line. But uh, if you ask a reasonable person, uh, one won't uh, expect uh, this to uh, remain uh, of the same order of magnitude if instead you take uh, boxes in uh, dimension 101, for example. But here, a big, uh, so we are already past Hanukkah, so here a big uh, miracle happened, and Nes uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, basically the same order of magnitude uh, uh, as long as uh, our geometric sets uh, have bounded description complexity and live in a fixed dimension. And uh, the net is strong in the sense that it can be picked uh, from the underlying point distribution. However, when our uh, uh, set is, uh, have uh, about the description complexity, then uh, all bets are off. For example, uh, you can just uh, take uh, uh, points in a convex position, for example, in a circle, then uh, uh, you can uh, uh, cut uh, out all the possible subsets uh, uh, using convex set, just uh, take uh, uh, the convex half of the point that you want. So convex sets uh, can uh, yield uh, complete uh, geometric hypergraphs uh, with uh, uh, all the possible subsets. And in such uh, circumstances, uh, uh, any strong net which would uh, uh, draw points from uh, uh, the underlying point set itself uh, would have to swallow up uh, uh, almost all the vast majority of uh, the ground point set, which is really bad. So. Uh, for convex sets, even in the plane, one cannot hope for uh, uh, strong epsilon nets uh, that would uh, depend on, the, on epsilon. Nevertheless, if you look uh, closer, the situation drastically improves uh, as you, uh, if you are allowed to choose additional points. So in this uh, particular example, you can pick uh, points from uh, in between in the middle. So it really helps for, to look at the other uh, possible uh, intersections of uh, at various intersections of, uh, for example, of uh, segments connecting uh, pairs of points. And uh, these general ideas uh, extends into higher dimensions uh, uh, through poor. So we can, uh, it generally helps uh, to look at uh, points uh, uh, that uh, look like uh, more or less uh, Weber points. So you in, uh, intersect uh, a uh, bunch of simplices in higher dimension, and you look at such points. And uh, uh, Alon and Kleidman uh, uh, used it to obtain a bounded size uh, with epsilon nets. And uh, the uh, argument was uh, uh, the argument used so called uh, selection theorems, uh, which uh, uh, also uh, play a uh, prominent role in the new result. So here is uh, some uh, uh, timeline. So uh, uh, the first uh, 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 bounds, uh, uh, the first constructions of bounded size, uh, bounded size with epsilon nets in all dimensions for uh, uh, the way obtained uh, uh, in early 90s, uh, 
Ballon, Barani, Floredi, and Kleidman, and this was uh, slightly improved. Uh, uh, so uh, Chiselle uh, and uh, others, they hit this uh, uh, barrier of one over epsilon to the D, which was also hit previously in the plane by uh, Ballon uh, by uh, Alon uh, et al, uh, who uh, got one of epsilon square in the plane. So basically, uh, this is, was used to be a state of the art until recently. So uh, uh, though Matushek and uh, Wagner um, offered. Uh, uh, slightly more, uh, somewhat more elegant construction uh, using uh, partition trees with a low hyperplane crossing number, but uh, the basic uh, order of magnitude was uh, one of uh, the epsilon to the D. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, 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 Book, Matushek, and Nivash uh, provided an only slightly superlinear lower bound, superlinear in one of epsilon in uh, all dimensions. So, uh, however, uh, non uh, uh, no uh, near linear upper bounds are known except uh, in dimension one or or in very special circumstances uh, for points in convex position in, in uh, uh, the plane or points on the moment curve or for special uh, distribution uh, when points are distributed more or less uniformly then uh, when you are allowed to assume that then of course uh, uh, weak epsilon nets are not uh, so much dissimilar from uh, strong nets. Uh, uh, so uh, this is it. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the question in the on end of the days. Uh, is it uh, the true growth rate of uh, uh, weak epsilon nets? If you are allowed to look at the optimal weak epsilon infrastructure, if this growth rate is uh, uh, more or less uh, linear in uh, one of the epsilon, which is the case for strong nets, uh, 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 or does it really uh, explode with the dimension? And it should be uh, the dimension should sit in the exponent. This is uh, the question. So you see, this is a cartoon from uh, I think uh, from uh, New Yorker. Uh, and lastly, for all eternity, French, blue cheese, orange. So it's, uh, this is, uh, uh, so every person has his own, their own wishes, uh, what they wish to know. So here in this talk, uh, uh, we, well, uh, uh, the, the question that we ask, uh, what is the true order of growth of uh, weakness? If it, close to strong, the case of strong net, so it's really bad. And uh, so this is a big question. And uh, uh, in uh, 2000, uh, some years ago, uh, a few years ago, uh, I have, uh, in, proved uh, the exponent in the plane from two to uh, arbitrary close to three half. So we have the exponent uh, which uh, uh, can be made arbitrary close to three halves, but uh, 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 the closer you get, the worse is your uh, 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 multiplicative constant. But, uh, uh, anyway, the exponent is uh, basically, can be made basically three halves. And uh, in this uh, paper, in this uh, work uh, that I'm going to uh, overview today, 
uh, uh, the exponent in all the higher dimensions is brought uh, even below d minus uh, half. So for example, in 3D, it's uh, uh, better than uh, 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 two and a half and so forth. And this is, uh, 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 this constitutes uh, the first uh, progress on the so general problem uh, since uh, more or less early 90s in some uh, 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 in when the first uh, the problem uh, uh, was first uh, studied uh, so one thing we know for sure is that the exponent uh, it's not d Nathan yeah uh, just a, just a question where is gamma in your in huh? Where gamma appears in the in the bounds that you just wrote, the little <laughs> appear. I tell you why. Because uh, in fact, uh, this exponent that you see it's somewhat an artifact of analysis. But uh, uh, the bound uh, actually it uh, uh, the exponent is a little better than d minus. Uh, just uh, uh, though it's a bit better than d minus half, it's basically tends to d minus half as d progresses, and uh, 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 of course uh, there is no reason to believe uh, this is the right one. Uh, uh, so uh, the paper on archive it does not uh, offer uh, the more the tightest uh, possible analysis. Thank you. So uh, it's uh, uh, the, the paper, of course, is uh, about 60 pages, and uh, it's uh, such a paper. Uh, uh, of course, it's like a, a, a little shop of horrors. So you look close at it, and you see that uh, it's really not uh, the minus half. It can be. Maybe slightly better. Uh, but uh, notice that uh, there is uh, this uh, misleading feeling that uh, 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 the bounds in the plane and in higher dimensions, they somehow align. So this D minus half, but I say, no, it's not true. It's, it gets, uh, in this respect, it gets better in higher dimensions because uh, 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 the, uh, the actual uh, barrier that we meet in the plane, uh, it does not uh, really, uh, it's not uh, the reason uh, why we have uh, something uh, near D minus half and higher dimensions. So uh, the, these exponents look similar, but uh, uh, there are different uh, reasons for these exponents. Yeah, here is uh, the basic reduction, which lies uh, at the, uh, uh, generally, which underlies both uh, results in the plan and in higher dimension. Uh, so suppose uh, uh, we have a heavy convex set, which uh, cuts out uh, a subset of uh, epsilon endpoints. And these points, uh, of course, uh, determine uh, epsilon n, choose uh, d, d minus one dimensional synthesis. So think of uh, points in 3D. So we are looking at all the possible triangles uh, that they determine, right? And, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, it's not difficult uh, to show that uh, we can uh, uh, pierce uh, a fixed fraction of these simplices by a single vertical line. And why so? Because, uh, uh, so we can uh, uh, project uh, uh, all of these uh, triangles uh, uh, say in 3D in the, in, down in the plane and uh, use uh, the first uh, selection theorem, right? And, uh, uh, okay, so 
uh, if we choose a vertical line uh, and we uh, know that uh, it uh, so it can generally uh, cross uh, and choose uh, uh, D and choose three possible simplest as possible triangles. Uh, and out of them, uh, we know that uh, epsilon uh, D fraction uh, come from our set. So this means, okay, we can uh, intercept such convex sets uh, 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 by uh, constructing uh, essentially a one dimensional straw net with respect to the intercepts of uh, D minus one simplices with the vertical line, right? And uh, 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 the effective ratio, it's the ratio of the simplices within our convex set versus so all the simplices that are determined uh, by uh, uh, the underlying point set, right? And uh, this is uh, the reduction. And uh, so uh, I, I would like uh, to, uh, again, to emphasize uh, the result which we use. Uh, that uh, if we have uh, a finite uh, point set in dimension D, and so uh, in projection, of course, the, the effective dimension is D minus one, but okay. And we have uh, a bunch of uh, uh, simplices. So we have a certain uh, hypergraph and it's a dense one. So we have, uh, uh, a fraction T of all the possible uh, simplices, uh, then uh, and this fraction is, is fairly close to one. So again, uh, we uh, can uh, pierce uh, uh, many of these uh, simplices by a single point, right? And this is, uh, and uh, of course, for uh, here, what we needed, uh, we, we could take all the possible simplices, but it works uh, even if we take a dense uh, uh, subset of simplices. And in fact, uh, uh, for uh, to make uh, this uh, idea to work, uh, we'll uh, resort uh, uh, to this uh, uh, selection result. So we uh, don't just look at all the possible synthesis, uh, we look at a particular family of synthesis, uh, which is uh, dense and uh, uh, we can uh, still pierce them uh, by a single point in the projection, which leaves, uh, le uh, which uh, uh, lifts, of course, to uh, line transversal to many simple D minus one dimensional simplices. So, uh, so uh, it's also important that uh, uh, these uh, uh, this point is uh, somewhat uh, determined by the vert uh, that we use to pierce them, the projection. It's you determined by uh, uh, a Setzerberg point of the underlying uh, uh, vertices. So uh, you can uh, obtain uh, uh, all the possible uh, candidate uh, uh, vertices for such piercing. Okay, uh, so is it so? The question is it okay? So we made the reduction from weak nets in dimension D to strong nets in uh, uh, dimension one. So uh, are we done? So uh, are we there yet? No. Uh, for one. Uh, we have uh, a very poor effective ratio. So the effective ratio is in fact uh, epsilon to the D because uh, it is a ratio of simplest uh, D dimension, uh, D minus one dimensional simplices in our convex set versus uh, all the possible simplices. So this uh, ratio is pretty bad. Uh, it's uh, the ratio in the paper of Giselle et al. And, uh, 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 by itself, it's not good enough to make an improvement. 
And moreover, uh, we uh, have uh, another uh, fundamental problem. Uh, that uh, the line, uh, the vertical line with which uh, we pierce many simplices uh, uh, within our convex set, uh, when we, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it depends on the set itself, which we don't know, know in advance, right? We don't want to uh, have uh, one vertical line for every convex set, right? And uh, this is a serious problem because uh, 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 if you want a good universal uh, set of such lines uh, that would be good for every uh, heavy convex set, it, it's at least as difficult as uh, solving the weak epsilon net problem in dimension d minus one. Uh, so uh, again, and uh, this would be uh, even awfuler. Uh, the exponent would be huge. So uh, the key ingredients of the improved bound are as follows. So for one, we uh, seek uh, a reduction to uh, strong uh, one-dimensional uh, Epsilon uh, nets, uh, uh, we, which would involve uh, only uh, a small uh, number of lines, near constantly many lines. This is one. So uh, we must, uh, we shouldn't allow, uh, we, we somehow manage to get away with few lines. And two, uh, something must be done about the effective ratio. Uh, which is naively epsilon to the d, it must be uh, reduced. And uh, the idea is that uh, uh, the uh, convex sets uh, that require this sort of approach, uh, they behave like a, a hyperplane. They are somewhat flat, and when we fix uh, uh, say uh, the points uh, of the sets, uh, we can the, uh, read off, uh, or at least we can narrow uh, down uh, very considerably uh, uh, the choice of the remaining points. Uh, and uh, those uh, convex sets, uh, and for, in such cases, one can uh, improve, replace uh, the global uh, bank of simplices uh, by a considerably smaller set and thus uh, the ratio won't be uh, epsilon to the d but somewhat uh, much smaller and uh, uh, if our sets uh, do not resemble hyperplanes so they are somewhat uh, thick uh, then uh, we can uh, do uh, something something else, for example, use uh, uh, strong nets, we can uh, uh, use uh, other methods using uh, uh, thickness of such sets. And uh, one of the key uh, technical tools, uh, actually, so we have uh, two, these two basic steps. One is to, uh, uh, achieve the, a good one dimensional reduction using only few lines, and two is uh, to reduce the effective ratio. So, actually, not reduce, but the opposite, because we want some ratio to be larger than absolute. And uh, so, both of them somehow happen uh, uh, to use, uh, at least in part, uh, uh, the uh, simply shall uh, partition uh, theorem of uh, Yehua Matushek. Uh, so, uh, and I suppose uh, all present here are familiar with it, right? Somewhat uh, wild assumption, but uh, I guess. You... We have some, uh, we uh, not only have S uh, near even parts in the partition, but we encode them by simplest and uh, uh, one can uh, 
uh, and any hyperplane uh, crosses uh, only uh, uh, some small fraction of the simplices, smaller than the overall number of simplices, uh, as you can see. Uh, and the rest of the simplices are substantial, uh, somehow separated. Uh, the other parts of the partition are separated along with the simplices from uh, uh, the uh, hyperplane. And this holds for any hyperplane. So this is uh, the basic result. And uh, uh, to solve the, the so-called, let's call it the multiple selection problem, uh, where we want to pierce uh, many simplices uh, inside the uh, convex set uh, without knowing it. And uh, we want to achieve this using few lines. Uh, so of course we project everything in the, vertically into dimension D minus one. And uh, we construct uh, uh, the uh, simplicial partition there. So we have a D minus one dimensional partition and uh, a set is called uh, uh, na uh, narrow if uh, uh, convex set, uh, if uh, its points are uh, uh, concentrated in the simplicial partition uh, in the zone of a certain uh, D minus uh, uh, two dimensional plane. So they uh, are not the scattered along across all parts, but they are somewhat uh, concentrated along the zone of uh, uh, this uh, uh, D minus two dimensional plane in the projection. And uh, otherwise we say that the set is uh, uh, spread. And uh, uh, of course, uh, narrow sets uh, can be treated very efficiently because uh, 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 for them uh, uh, we can, uh, 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 for, for each uh, part uh, in this, uh, partition uh, in the projection, we can construct a weak net with uh, a better ratio and uh, which results in this uh, uh, recursive terms that you can see, uh, which uh, uh, on the whole very much resembles uh, the recursive term and the whole recursion argument in the paper of Matushek and Wagner, except that it all works in dimension D minus one, so uh, this sort of recursive term, uh, it, uh, its contribution, asymptotic contribution is uh, uh, D minus, uh, has exponent D minus one and not D. So it's basically like Matushek and Wagner, but uh, one dimensionless. And uh, when our uh, the set, uh, the, when uh, our convex set, when its points are spread, so they are not uh, concentrated in some narrow zone. Uh, uh, only then we uh, proceed with our uh, one-dimensional reduction, uh, which uh, uses uh, this. Uh, uh, now amount of vertical lines, uh, which uh, where are the size of the partition that I mentioned D minus one. So the idea is to uh, uh, trade the actual uh, points uh, by uh, just to shrink uh, everything that lies in the single uh, parti uh, uh, partition uh, 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 a subset of the partition in the same simplex uh, to just one point in that simplex. So uh, we uh, really look at uh, 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 reduce uh, the uh, size of the or order of this uh, geometric uh, hypergraph uh, uh, and uh, apply uh, uh, the, sec uh, the selection theorem there. And uh, uh, the, the, in fact, uh, then we can uh, uh, look at, uh, uh, since any uh, possible piercing point 
they're chosen from uh, Twerber points, and uh, these Twerber points are now chosen, uh, 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 determined by points at, uh, of very small size. We can just take all of them. So the idea is that uh, if the points are not uh, concentrated in the projection in some uh, uh, or dimensional zones, and uh, 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 we can uh, such simplices are much easier uh, to use uh, because uh, uh, the only uh, case uh, when we uh, uh, and uh, I better not detail it from here. I think uh, the high level idea is clear, but. Uh, uh, we just don't have the time to detail it. Uh, uh, but the idea is that if our sets a point uh, of the convex set are not uh, narrowly concentrated, then our synthesis are somewhat uh, uh, wide and it's relatively easy to hear. And uh, here we go to the second part. How do we improve uh, the effective ratio of uh, uh, simplices within our convex set versus simplices that are just uh, determined by any D points from the underlying set. And uh, the idea is uh, rather uh, is uh, to reduce uh, the global bank of uh, synthesis uh, that we look at. So uh, uh, our convex set will still contribute epsilon n to the d uh, epsilon to the d epsilon uh, n to the d intercepts, but uh, the pool versus uh, versus which it's compared uh, uh, and the effective ratio will uh, the, the the pool will be from which it shows and it will be much smaller, so the ratio will go up. And uh, uh, the key uh, assumption that we'll use is. Uh, uh, for, for example, it can be easily achieved for hyperplanes. So what is so special about hyperplanes uh, is that uh, if you look at, uh, for example, let's look in 3D. So uh, if we uh, fix three points, then uh, the rest of the points uh, are known, right? This is, uh, uh, if you want to uh, define uh, an abstract uh, property, what does it uh, feel to be a hyperplane? This is it, right? And uh, uh, in such cases, uh, this uh, very property, it means uh, that uh, not all simplices in the points that are born equal, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, only because of various incidence bounds, only uh, incidences between points and hyperplanes, only a small amount of triangles, uh, or there are n two three triangles, but only a small amount of them arise as part of uh, uh, epsilon-rich hyperplanes. So we can uh, do something approximate for convex sets as well. Uh, so uh, this time we do the simplicial partition in dimension D and uh, we actually, uh, 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 and we relax uh, the property, what does it mean to be a hyperplane? Uh, because, so we say that uh, whenever we pick uh, uh, D points uh, in one part, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, fix a large proportion of the remaining points of the set uh, are concentrated uh, in the zone of the supporting uh, hyperplane of this D point chosen locally. And uh, the, uh, in such convex sets are called ties, so they look like approximately like hyperplanes, and the rest are called loose. And uh, uh, again, for uh, 
uh, we restrict our attention to tight sets and I need to, uh, many details. So we can uh, vastly reduce uh, because of various incidence bounds uh, uh, and uh, or equivalently the complexity of uh, many cells in a hyperplane arrangement. Uh, we can uh, vastly reduce uh, the, pool, the effective pool of simplices uh, we are working with and thus increasing the effective ratio beyond epsilon to the D. And of course, for loose sets, uh, which do not behave like hyperplanes, well, something does not behave like a hyperplanes, we can use uh, 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 straw nets. And uh, if this does not work, then we also, you can also use that such sets are uh, uh, considerably th uh, th uh, thick in the sense that uh, uh, we uh, can, uh, Rather than uh, looking at the synthesis, uh, uh, we can uh, somewhat coarsen them and replace uh, their points by vertices of their uh, enclosing synthesis in this the dimensional simplicial partitioning. And uh, uh, so uh, we have uh, this uh, trade of uh, online, and we have uh, the tight sets for which we improve the ratio. Uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, thick sets, uh, 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 the loose sets uh, for which we do something else. And there are two bounds, we separate constructions, which involve the size of the partition in which must be uh, optimized uh, to balance between the two parts. And uh, what we did, did we sweep uh, under the rug, so uh, it helps to uh, assume that uh, points are in a substantially convex uh, position. So for example, we don't have a, a, a large simplices with vertices uh, uh, in P uh, so that uh, inside the simplex we contain many points. If this is not the case, okay, go to the strong map. So this is uh, something that uh, uh, takes no time to do. And uh, it also happens uh, that uh, our life uh, is easier if uh, uh, as we project uh, the, set, the points, uh, they don't uh, lie uh, in a, a convex position in dimension D minus one. So this, uh, uh, again, this uh, is uh, the sort of property which we use when dealing with uh, loose sets. And uh, what is done uh, uh, when this is not the case, when we project everything and the, it, uh, the position is nearly convex now in dimension one less uh, than, uh, somehow the point distribution is close to D minus two dimensional. Uh, so uh, again, uh, something, uh, uh, a recurrence uh, in the, uh, of Matushik and Wagner, but uh, my, in some more laborious way, but it, it can still be improved because now we are talking of D minus two dimensional, which lives in dimension uh, D. And uh, so here is the conclusion. So the exponent of D has been reached. Uh, the cu currently, uh, uh, the, the current exponent is largely the, an artifact of the analysis. Uh, uh, so, however, however, uh, there is this uh, one of epsilon to the d minus one, which cannot be, we cannot improve beyond it uh, as long as we use these uh, vertical lines, as long as we, to this projection. But again, I see no reason why it should be done uh, like this. 
just uh, uh, of course we can think of uh, non-vertical lines but uh, in the present uh, presently the rather uh, uh, nuts and bolts that uh, uh, prevent us from uh, improving beyond the, the minus one and uh, uh, there is also some uh, interesting, uh, 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 but even in the plane, if we wish to improve the exponent beyond three halves, we uh, should better understand the structure of points as with uh, uh, many point line incidences, because uh, this is uh, the source of the exponent three halves in the plane. In higher dimension, uh, uh, we have uh, somewhat uh, uh, weaker argument, uh, but uh, still uh, it will hit uh, some uh, barrier. So the exponent will be just because of this. Uh, as it is using this method, it cannot uh, be improved uh, beyond it to some uh, constant. Uh, uh, which is smaller than one. Uh, uh, so until, because uh, again, uh, we, uh, uh, the worst case is when we have points, uh, uh, convex sets that are very, uh, we have like hyperplanes, but they are not quite like hyperplanes. So uh, hyperplanes have a few bounded uh, VC dimension. Uh, that's it. Uh, we have a good bound. But for something that approaches uh, hyperplanes, uh, uh, but it's not so. So it's a uh, it's, it's a very it's most difficult situation. And uh, here uh, the connection between the weak epsilon net problem and uh, point hyperplane incidences uh, it uh, kicks in. Uh, 